Onda Magazine presenta ¿Qué onda en Houston? For more than 30 years, ¿Qué onda Magazine has been committed to bringing you news about the Hispanic community and the communities in Houston in general, and today is no exception. As you know, the November 5th election is nearly upon us, and today we have the honor of welcoming Sean Tier, the Democratic candidate for the Harris County District Attorney's Office, which is a position on your ballot this November 5th. Sean Tier, it's such a pleasure to have you. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm great. I'm excited to, to get going on this interview. Awesome. Well, you know, we want to get right to it and we want to know why are you running for the position of Harris County District Attorney? Um, for really my entire professional life, it has been a passion of mine um, to, to be in that office, to, to advocate on behalf of victims, to make sure that everything is done correctly. Um, I started at that office in 2005 as an intern in law school uh, when I was at the University of Houston. And I fell in love with it immediately. Um, and so as I progressed through that office, doing really every kind of case that we have from classy traffic tickets all the way up to capital murders and everything in between, I got to see every part of the district attorney's office. And it was just the next step for me to be able to be at the top and the head of that office helping craft the next generation of prosecutors. Awesome. That's such a, you have such extensive experience in the criminal justice system and that's very important. But what makes you different from your opponent? Uh, I think exactly what you just talked about, the experience. Um, I, I have been in the office for 13 years. I've supervised hundreds of different prosecutors. I've helped manage the budget of that office. And even more importantly, I've tried every kind of case there. I've handled aggravated sexual assaults. I've handled child sexual assaults. I've handled capital murders and murders. Um, I've sat across the table with victims and their families in countless different cases and let them know how we were going to go about getting them the justice they deserve. That's not the case for my opponent. Um, he's never handled anything that we would really quantify as, as a serious case. He's never handled a murder. He's never handled any type of a sex assault. He's never handled a child abuse case. Um, and if you haven't done that, if you haven't been in those rooms and in the courtroom handling that, it, it's almost impossible for you to make the decisions and ask other people to do that. And, and he hasn't. Yes. And, you know, the election is so close. Tuesday, November 5th, people, you're going to, they're going to see you on the ballot. Yes. And um, if elected, uh, Sean, what do you want to accomplish in your first 30 days in office? Um, you know, the first 30 days are, are really a getting acclimated, getting ready to go. I, I'm going to bring in a, a, a host on the leadership committee of real experienced prosecutors. And so we're going to be able to hit the ground running, but in the first 30 days, we're going to change our intake division first and foremost. We're going to change the way that we accept charges from police officers. It's going to improve the caliber of cases that we take and thereby shrinking the time from the time we arrest them to the time that they're eventually disposed of. Um, and the other thing within the 30 days that we're going to change is our domestic violence bureau. We are going to take all of the domestic violence cases into one central location. Um, so we're going to have trauma-informed prosecutors and victim advocates there to work with each of the survivors of domestic violence. It's going to change our outcomes in so many of those cases. And inside of that bureau, we're also going to have a cultural outreach program where we go to the survivors instead of asking them to come to us to get protective orders, to get the resources that they need to be able to leave dangerous, abusive scenarios um, without having to look back and, and reintegrate. I see. You, you really come from extensive experience there. That's right. And, you know, we want to know, Kionda is all about the Hispanic community that's very close to heart. Yes. And for that reason, we want to ask you, are you planning on hiring more Hispanic prosecutors? Oh, absolutely. I, I think that it is, I think it is so important that the chief law enforcement agency, the DA's office in the third largest county in the country, reflects the community that we serve. And Harris County 
has such a vibrant Hispanic community and it's so large and, and disparate and, and diverse um, in and of itself that the fact that we don't have the representation at the highest echelons of the DA's office right now of uh, the Hispanic community is, is really not fair. And so we are going to be very intentional about making that office reflect the community that we serve. That's great to hear. Representation is very important. And, you know, you have experience from the actual Harris County District Attorney's Office. And based on that experience that you have, on your opinion, what do you think is the reason why there's so many um, backlog in, in cases in that office? Uh, I think it is, uh, it's a host of reasons. One of them is the intake division. Um, we're taking bad cases. We're not strengthening the cases we could take or we should take. Um, which lengthens the time before we can actually collect the evidence and, and dispose of the cases. I think there's a culture of fear inside the office right now. Um, prosecutors don't do what they know is the right thing because they don't want to draw the ire of the upper administration. Um, I think fixing those two things first and foremost is going to help reduce the backlog. Um, and you know, just just being present as a leader, trying cases with your people, working with them uh, is, is going to go a long way to fixing that. That's great to hear. I really appreciate you talking about your insights, you know, and um, for those people who are looking at their ballots, they're making plans to go vote. Can you help us understand what does a Harris County District Attorney do? What does that role look like? So it is one of, if not the most important role on your ballot this time in a local election. The Harris County DA's office is in charge of every criminal case in the entire county. Um, we, we file more than 200,000 cases a year for, the Harris, for, for Harris County. So there are 86 different law enforcement agencies. So all of the constables, the sheriff's department, Houston Police Department, Pasadena Police Department, Baytown Police Department, Jersey Village, all of the different police agencies that you see, the only way they can file charges is by calling the DA's office. And that's where the crimes come to be prosecuted. So we have a massive, massive undertaking. We handle juvenile cases. We handle um, obviously all of the adult misdemeanors and felony cases. So it is truly one of the most important roles in our huge county. That's great to hear because there's so many things in a ballot happening, so many positions to vote for. That's right. Do you have any words to encourage anybody who's like on the fence about voting? Uh, regardless of who you vote for, go vote. This, this election is so important. Go make your voice heard. Harris County and the state of Texas um, is actually in play, meaning we could have a determining factor for the first time in a very, very long time about who the next president is, about our own senator. So this, this state could be decided by a few thousand votes. So any time right now that you're thinking, maybe I'll just let someone else handle it, this is not the election for that. Get out, make a plan, and do it early. Early voting starts October 21st. Don't wait till November 5th to vote because we all know things come up. Flat tires happen. Children get sick. Hurricanes come even in November now. Um, so get out there on the 21st or the 22nd or the 23rd. The lines are going to be less. It's going to be easier to get in and out to vote. But make a plan and go vote. That's, uh, that's some great advice for, for our viewers. We know, like he said, early voting runs from October 21st through November first and um, election day is Tuesday November 5th all right well Sean can you tell us about you know the process of extradition and how that works if you know what do you have to tell us and, and help us learn about that process sure um, you know when being in in Texas where we are fairly close to an international border um, we we experience this a lot where someone commits a, a violent crime and then flees not just Harris County and Houston, but flees the country. Um, we work collaboratively at the DA's office almost on a daily basis with our federal partners. Um, 
to, to make sure that we can locate people who flee the country no matter where they go uh, and, and work through whatever country they're actually apprehended in to bring them back to face justice here. And sometimes it is as easy, especially in, in if they only go to Mexico uh, or to Canada, we have, we have a very good working relationship with them. But I recently, before I left, um, worked through an extradition that took three years because someone fled to Nepal, uh, where we don't have an extradition treaty with them. Uh, and so that was a very, it was a very extensive prospect to, to get the individual back. And, and this person had killed four people. So it was something that was very important to get the person back so that they could face the justice uh, and, and the families could have that sense of closure, you know, because what I've noticed in dealing with people who have lost others, um, the closure can't really help them. Mm -hmm. It just starts the next process of healing. Um, as long as the individual is out there and is not facing justice, then I've seen these victims' families not start the healing process. They stay in the position of anger. They stay in the position of dread. Um, but when you hear the jury or the judge sentence someone, it begins the next process. And that's why I'm so adamant that we continue to, to pursue people who violate others uh, to the ends of the earth, quite frankly, and quite honestly. Um, so it's something that I've worked through a lot, working with Interpol, working with the FBI, the U.S. Marshals, um, the United States States State Department, so that we can bring people back. And we do it on a very, very regular basis, and we're going to continue to do it. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. It's really great to hear about your backgrounds, all the goals that you have for the for Harris County, which is the third largest county in the United States, so it really matters the work that, that you bring to the table, right? Now, to close out, Mr. Sean Tier, um, do you have any special words for our Hispanic community? Just that I've, I'm a native Houstonian. I've grown up here. Um, our Hispanic community is, I think, the thing that makes Houston and Harris County so special and so unique. Um, and I am, as a career prosecutor, I know that we have underserved the Hispanic community for decades. The, the amount of unreported crimes that happen because victims feel like they'll be persecuted for not having documentation, for not having a, a grasp of the English language. What I want to communicate to our entire Hispanic community is that we see you at the DA's office, we care about you, and there's no reason ever to be a victim of a crime and not report it, because our job is to make sure that you see justice, not that you see ICE or anything else, that's not our job. And we will not participate in re-victimizing victims of crimes. My goal is to have the Hispanic community and all of our immigrant communities be equally represented in reporting crimes as the native born white people are. It's, it's completely unfair and it has been unfair for generations. And I'm going to be a part of the, the group that stops that. Thank you, Mr. Sean here. Like we really appreciate you coming to OK on the magazine and sharing why you're running and what makes you special. And it's really um, amazing to hear your passion. And um, I really thank you for your time. And like I said, viewers, Shantir is here with us and he's told us about election. If you are planning to go vote, please visit harrisvotes.com. Thank you so much for your time. For all things Houston, please stay tuned to K on the Magazine daily on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and even X, and bi-weekly on print. Thank you so much. Thank you. K on the Magazine presentó